Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be taking a look at a long overdue review of the X-Men the Animated Series Jean Grey Marvel Legends action figure. This figure actually came out quite a while ago now, it may have been 2023, it may have actually even been 2022, so I'm long, long overdue with this one. But this is one that has escaped my clutches until now and I've finally been able to get my hands on a slightly battered uh, copy <laughs> when we look at the packaging um, but nevertheless I'm pleased to finally be able to share my thoughts with you on this figure because as you'll probably know by now I'm a massive fan of the X-Men the animated series I grew up watching this series and I really liked this line which sadly seems to have been discontinued so without further ado, let's kick off by taking a look at the packaging. Now, I love this VHS packaging. I think this is a really great design. I'm really pleased that we're seeing this transported over to the uh, Spider-Man animated series figures that we're getting now. Uh, I think this looks really good. They've emulated the style of the animated series as it was back in 1992, I think when it first aired. And uh, they've definitely captured the style or the feel, uh, the essence of those old VHS covers, which I used to love because I actually owned quite a few of these as a child. The art style is really sympathetic to the style and tone of the series and I think they've done a fantastic job with this newly commissioned artwork. It looks bright, it's colourful, it's really fun and it's very evocative of the show. So what's not to love? Uh, of course we have the X-Men logo up front and centre there as well which does my heart glad and I just think they've done a really nice job of this all round really. If we then look at the side panel we can see that again they've got that VHS uh, theme running through it and we know from the other figures in this collection that you can stack these up side by side and you can have these various characters looking in the same direction or looking at each other depending on how you want to do that. It's particularly helpful I suppose when you have heroes versus villains, that's kind of cool. And then if we look at the back of the packaging, it's slightly more underwhelming, very, very, very text heavy, uh, but we do have this uh, image, uh, digital rendering of the action figure I suppose. Not really displayable in its own right, it's all about the front of the packaging really with this particular model. Knowing that this is probably the final figure in this sub-wave or sub-line of action figures from Marvel Legends that I was likely to get my hands on, I was super excited to open Jean Grey up. And that's a real shame because overall uh, I'm a little bit disappointed with this figure. Let's start off by talking about the head sculpt. I really do not like this head sculpt. It is brand new, I don't believe we've seen this before, um, so credit there I suppose, but I just don't think it works. I actually don't think it's a very good likeness of Jean Grey as she was portrayed in the uh, 92 version of the X-Men animated series. Uh, I don't think it looks an awful lot like her in truth. Um, I don't even think the hair really works the same way. Um, she used to have it up over her head and not like in front of her uh, forehead here as you can see. And uh, yeah, I just, it, the face just looks too long and too narrow. It just doesn't look right and the eyes just look too big. I think they've done a good job with the lips, um, but yeah, the paint apps are nice. There's actually a wash running through the hair as well, uh, which you can't really see here, unfortunately, but there is a little bit of effort here to add a little bit of shading to give it that depth and texture. But yeah, there's something about this head sculpt that I just really don't like. In terms of the body sculpt, there's nothing particularly new or earth shattering here. I think we've seen all of these pieces recycled on, from other figures previously. Of course, the gauntlets are sculpted in, the belt is a separate piece, and the shoulder pads are actually new, I think. They're also sculpted in. Ordinarily, I'm a huge fan of actually sculpting in detail. I love that, particularly if it's complemented by great paint apps. However, uh, these particular sculpted pieces actually really hinder the articulation, which we'll see a little bit closer in a moment. Now, the big thing to talk about in this figure, of course, is the cell shading, because I'm always a stippler when it comes to uh, the paint apps that we see on figures, and there's actually quite a lot here, which is absolutely fantastic. However, uh, this really depends on how you feel about cell shading. Now, this tends to be like Marmite for people. Some people love it and some people hate it. And there doesn't seem to be much give in between. For me, I'm definitely in the love it camp. I like seeing the shading. It reminds me very much of the style, the art style in the animated series. I think it works really well. It also gives it a little bit of depth and texture, which I love. And it just makes the figure look visually more interesting and appealing. So I really like it. I like how it's been applied here. There have been instances where it hasn't been particularly well applied. I think on Jean Grey, it works really, really well. The colors have chosen actually complement the colours on the figure and I think it all looks quite subtle but quite striking at the same time and I think it works an absolute treat. So I think they've done a really good job here. What works less well is you'll notice they have painted in some of the details on her hands there to be to perform part of the gauntlet and this looks a little bit uh, smudged to me and a little bit blurry and it just looks unconvincing and I'm just 
I'm not really feeling this element. Likewise, some of the detail on the arm of the costume there is painted in. The blue uh, patches are painted in rather than sculpted. And again, that's a little bit of a disappointment, really. Turning to the articulation, there is a ball joint in the top of the neck, which will allow the head to move from side to side. It will lean left and right, and it can bend forwards and backwards a pretty healthy distance because there is a nice, helpful hinge joint here as well. Now, of course, the hair is always going to be a bit of an obstacle when it comes to bending backwards, and this is particularly true on the alternate head. Now, when we look at the ball joints in the shoulders, yes, the arms will lift up, but those shoulder pads there that are sculpted in a hard plastic will not allow it to extend further than it you can see on screen at the moment, which is really disappointing. Again, we have a pin swivel at the elbow, so no double joint here, which is a shame. We do have the pin swivel at the wrist as well, and although you can hinge this forwards and backwards, of course, we've got that sculpted piece there in the gauntlet, which is going to prevent it from going very far backwards. There is a ball joint in the upper torso, which is great. It will the figure to move from side to side and she can lean left and right a good distance as well. Sadly though, this doesn't apply to bending forwards and backwards because this movement is very restricted. There's the usual ball joint in the hips allowing the legs to kick out to the side, not as much as I would anticipate to be honest. Uh, there is a thigh swivel there as well. The legs will kick forwards a really good distance and they'll go back a little bit as well, which is great. There's a double joint at the knee allowing that lower leg to kick all the way back there. And then we have the ankle rocket there allowing that foot to uh, hinge forwards and backwards and rock from side to side. She's also pretty light when it comes to accessories, coming with just an additional pair of closed fists and an alternate loose hair head. And I think it's a real shame that we didn't get any effects, uh, accessories that we could have used here, some psi effects, uh, something, anything really, to just bolster this. Uh, this seems very, very lightweight, which is uh, you know, pretty disappointing. On the other hand, I am pleased that we did get this alternate head. This is much better to my eyes. I just think this works a lot better. It looks a lot closer to what we'd expect, what we're used to seeing on screen. It looks a lot more accurate. Uh, maybe that is not necessarily the sculpt itself, but the way the hair flows. Uh, but I think this looks really cool. This is much more striking, and I think, you know, it looks kind of cool when you put it on a display. All in all, then, for me, this is going to be a three-star figure. I've got to be honest, my overall takeaway is that I'm pretty disappointed. Now, my expectations were raised. I really like the other figures in this collection uh, and it's a shame that this one kind of lowers the bar a little bit. I think they could have improved things um, by including some extra accessories that would have been helpful. Uh, I think the, the head sculpt lets it down, uh, certainly on the ponytail head sculpt. Uh, it just seems a little bit too severe and just doesn't look quite right to me. Uh, and then we've got some, some sloppiness on some of the paint apps, um, but the major one really is the articulation. It's just very restrictive and it just all in all makes this figure feel a little bit underwhelming. So in terms of my recommendation for this figure, I think this is one for completists only. If you really like the animated X-Men series line uh, with the cell shading, then this is probably the version for you. I'm personally quite happy to have it in my collection because I like the consistency and I like that it is referencing the uh, 92 series costume. Um, but for those fans who are being introduced to X-Men 97, and um, there's a new figure on the market there that is has a slightly different look, but has a lot more articulation and a few more accessories which might be more appealing to you and it also doesn't have the cell shading so if that's a bugbear for you then that's probably the way to go. If you enjoyed this video please do give it a like and remember to subscribe as there'll be plenty more videos soon.